Hello friends, James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, June 29th, 2017. Today would normally be a New World Next Week day, but James Evan Pilato is a bit busy today, so I'm just going to be releasing this, uh, well, emergency broadcast in many ways, because things are getting extremely hairy in Syria, and no doubt this is what we would have been covering on New World Next Week if we were recording this week anyway, so let's go through it. In some detail, as I'm sure you've seen, on Monday night, the White House released this statement from the press secretary, Sean Spicer, out of nowhere, saying the United States has identified potential preparations for another chemical weapons attack by the Assad regime that would likely result in the mass murder of civilians, including innocent children. The activities are similar to preparations the regime made before its April 4th, 2017 chemical weapons attack. And as we have previously stated, the United States is in Syria to eliminate Islamic State of Iraq and Syria. If, however, Mr. Assad conducts another mass murder attack using chemical weapons, he and his military will pay a heavy price. A bizarre, evidenceless statement out of nowhere. And as Jason Jones notes here on Twitter, if another chemical weapon attack occurs, it will be obvious the Syrian government is not behind it, exactly as they were not behind the April 4th, 2017 chemical weapons attack or the 2013 chemical weapons attack, or in perhaps the more succinct but more punchy headline from moonofalabama.com, White House says it will fake chemical weapons attack in Syria. That is what this announcement amounts to, that the United States government, specifically the White House, specifically the press secretary, is coming out and all but announcing that there is going to be another fake and staged chemical weapon attack that will instantly and without evidence be blamed on the Syrian government uh, precisely for the purpose of uh, justifying the boots on the ground regime change that we've been waiting for, I suppose, for the last six years in Syria. And uh, this article goes through it in some detail. Uh, It starts out, the White House claims that the Syrian government is preparing chemical weapon attacks. This is clearly not the case. Syria is winning the war against the country, in the country, against ISIS. Any such attack would clearly be to its disadvantage. The White House announcement must thereby be understood as preparation for another U.S. attack on Syria in retaliation, quote-unquote, for an upcoming staged chemical weapon attack, quote-unquote, which will be blamed on the Syrian government. And he goes through here in some detail about the 2013 uh, chemical weapons attack that was blamed on Assad falsely, the 2017 attack that was blamed on Assad falsely. If you need more information on that, I'll put um, some resources to some of the work that I've done on this in the past. But suffice it to say that yes, those uh, incidents were not the work of the Syrian government. And this Threat can be taken as nothing other than a false flag weapons attack threat, as it was quickly followed up by U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Nikki Haley Haley tweeting that uh, not only would they instantly blame Assad in the event of such an attack, but also Russia and Iran who support him killing his own people. So not only are they predicting a chemical weapon attack, they're predicting that it will kill innocent children, and they are saying they will blame not just Assad, but Russia and Iran for that as well. Uh, Exceptionally, incredibly dangerous rhetoric coming out from an already exceptionally dangerous situation where it has been confirmed that that recent uh, shootdown of the, uh, the Syrian... SU-22 jet that took place was, did take place on uh, the orders or on the on the decision of the people uh, in, in the air, on the ground, the uh, the people in the, the forces in the theater. It, that didn't come from the U.S. president. There was no going up the chain of command for that. It was quote-unquote self-defense. So a hot-headed, trigger-happy pilot on the wrong day can start full-scale war with Russia, with Iran, with the Syrian government, which amounts to the same thing, um, just because they happen to feel a bit trigger-happy that day. That should be concerning, even if this is all just rhetoric and they're just playing it up. Still, this does cause real tensions that can result in real war. And here, um, he goes into some detail about this fake chemical weapon attack that's coming up. The announced fake chemical attack and the retaliation it is supposed to justify will likely happen in the southwest of Syria around Dura, where all recent attempts by Israel and the U.S. supported takfiris to dislodge the Syrian government forces have failed. The provocation 
now prepared and announced by Macron and the White House and supported by the UK, is probably planned to happen shortly before or during the upcoming G20 meeting in Hamburg. And that's going to be taking place, I believe, July 8th and 9th in Hamburg in Germany. Uh, Putin will be there, as will Trump, as will the rest of the G20 leaders. So that is going to be a absolutely critical window for um, for moving forward with this situation one way or another, and hopefully it will be a good way. And if people want to know about that uh, that Dara area and the southwest where Syrian governments have not been dislodged and why that's important, they can turn to a great article by previous uh, Corbett Report guest Sharmin Narwani up at the American Conservative, Dispatch from the Middle East, U.S. Buildup All About Iran. And she goes into a lot of detail about the actual movements on the ground and where forces are located and what it means. But if you look at the map, there are three major roads that connect Syria, or three major highways that connect Syria to Iraq. The northernmost highway is currently mostly under the control of the U.S.-backed Kurdish forces that are seeking to carve out a statelet known as Western Kurdistan and a little bit more on that later. Uh, the, th this road, the, uh, the, the Homs to Baghdad uh, road, is, uh, goes right through ISIS territory, including Deir ez-Zur, where the Syrian forces have carved out a little pocket uh, where they're protecting up to 120,000 civilians right now. Um, and they're uh, fast approaching that area as they start to overwhelm the, uh, the ISIS territory. And then the the southernmost, the Damascus to Baghdad highway, is in this extremely strategic corridor where there is this, there are these Syrian forces here in the southwestern portion of the country, but there's also these rebel quote unquote forces that are right here around Al Tanaf, this extremely important area that connects, that's really on the border of Iraq and Syria and Jordan. And this, this little pocket is uh, extremely important at the moment. Um, because as uh, Narwani gets into in this uh, in this article, it's essentially about the buildup um, against Iran and cutting Syria off from Iran, uh, writing why Washington wants that border, talking about here in this uh, Syria, Iraq, Jordan area. Um, she writes, quote, Re-establishing Syrian control over the highway running from Deir Azur to al Kamal and Al-Qaim is also a priority for Syria's allies in Iran. Uh, Dr. Masoud As Asadullahai, a Damascus-based expert in Middle East affairs, explains the road through al Kamal is Iran's favored option. It's a shorter path to Baghdad, safer, and runs through green habitable areas. The M1 highway, Damascus to Baghdad, is more dangerous for Iran because it runs through Iraq's Anbar province and areas that are mostly desert. If the U.S. objective in Al-Tanaf was to block the southern highway between Syria and Iraq, thereby cutting off Iran's land access to the borders of Palestine, they have been badly outmaneuvered. Syrian, Iraqi, and allied troops have now essentially trapped the U.S.-led forces in a fairly useful triangle down south and created a new triangle between Palmyra, Palmyra Deir Ez-Zur, and Abu Kamal for their final battle against ISIS. You can f see more of this detail in, uh, in a more detailed map of the area and basically those U.S.-backed rebel forces, quote-unquote, kind of trapped in this little area. So um, this whole surrounding area becomes more important and we're likely to see some sort of uh, false flag action specifically in this southwest area uh, so that they can more effectively block block the uh, the Iraq Syria access specifically from uh, Damascus to Baghdad so that's what's going on strategically and it is no coincidence that it is just days literally a few days after Seymour Hirsch comes out with his uh, Trump's red line article that talks about uh, how the April 4th, 2017 attack was not the work of the Syrian government. The U.S. intelligence agencies absolutely 100% know that. And uh, there's even uh, intercepted uh, chat protocols of security advisor and an active American soldier talking about this that have been leaked to the press now, where they're talking about this. We know this wasn't uh, the, the Syrian government that did this. We know this is this is insane. What are they doing? Why are they attacking? The Russians are being exceptionally patient with all of this, and they probably won't be for much longer. Uh, again, just to give you on that knife edge perspective. But if you did notice about this original press release, that it's coming from the press 
secretary, completely evidenceless, no sign whatsoever that any intelligence agency is signing off on this supposed intelligence that uh, identifies potential preparations for another chemical weapons attack, whatever that means, completely no information whatsoever, you're not the only one who was caught off guard. Apparently, the Pentagon and the State Department were completely clueless on Trump's Assad allegation. Uh, Pent Pentagon officials say they were totally unaware if this putative evidence of a chemical attack unt uh, until the moment the White House issued the statement, something they completely didn't see coming. The State Department, which would normally be involved in coordinating such an important press release, also wasn't consulted. Uh, there's something very strange going on with all of this. And now, a couple of days later, perhaps as a face-saving me measure, Mattis comes out and claims that maybe the White House threat to Syria worked. Um, and uh, basically the reasoning is that uh, uh, Secretary Mad Dog Mattis is saying, well, since no chemical attack happened after all, I guess the Syrians listened, right? Uh, indeed. So they make this ridiculous assertion out of nowhere for nothing, and then when nothing happens, they claim credit for it. Uh, that's a very old trick, but one they're going to attempt to use. Hopefully, they're not going to attempt to pull off the uh, the, the coup de grace in Dara in the coming weeks as they uh, approach G20, but we still have to keep our eye on that. Um, and uh, just to, to add another layer to all of this, uh, Mattis has recently come out and confirmed that the U.S. will continue to arm the Syrian Kurds after they take over Raqqa. So uh, the Kurds are going to continue to be supported in, materially uh, by the United States in their quest for this Western Kurdistan. Um, and that is going to be an exceptionally important part of what shakes out from this and where they're attempting to go with all of this. So they're attempting to close off Syria from Iran and they're uh, uh, attempting to carve out Western Kurdistan. These are some of the objectives that are going on and they're positioning themselves for that. A chemical weapons, a staged chemical weapons attack in the Southwest area would be the justification for them to come out and basically root out uh, the, the Syrian forces from the rest of the country that they, they are so clearly winning at the moment. Again, it makes no sense whatsoever that Assad would suddenly start chem chemical weaponing attacking his own people. It makes absolutely no sense, but don't think of the logic. Just go along with the evidenceless, sourceless White House statements. Anyway, Russia is saying, uh, Lavrov uh, is coming out and saying that Putin and Trump should probably talk at the G20. Oh, you think so? They're both going to be there in Hamburg in July. Uh, July 8th and 9th, so it might be a good chance for them to actually meet face-to-face -face and actually talk and uh, hopefully avoid this craziness, but we'll have to uh, we'll have to see what eventuates from that and whether things uh, proceed or escalate before the G20, which is always a possibility. Uh, finally, just as a side note, uh, uh, Subrata Ghostroy here on, on Twitter uh, noting that there was a U.S. military spokesman on BBC World trashing the Syrian Observatory for Human Rights, that propaganda outfit, a U.S.-sponsored organization, saying they're not credi credible, talking about deaths from U.S. airstrikes. Uh, he said that uh, the U.N., uh, he trashed the U.N. over more than 200 civilian deaths from U.S. airstrikes in Syria. Um, that's extremely, that's an extremely important part of this that we shouldn't forget, because let's... Let's not. Let's put this into perspective. I had a uh, tweet recently, and I didn't have it uh, queued up here, so you'll forgive me as I bring it up on screen. But I had a tweet recently that puts this into perspective. I think in a pretty stark way. Um, that's pretty undeniable. Uh, hold on one second. Uh, yes, the U.S. government killed more civilians this month than all terrorist attacks in Europe over the last 12 years. So think about how crazy people get every time there's one of these terrorist attacks in Europe. Well, that happens on pretty much a monthly basis. So in fact, maybe a daily basis, depending on the day, when it comes to U.S. government killing civilians in areas like Syria. Uh, the U.S. killed at least 472 civilians in Syria just in the last month. This is the carnage that is being wrought right now, and it could that could amplify by orders of magnitude if and when they pull the trigger on this chemical weapons attack. We need to sound the alarm on this now before it's too late. So let's get this information out 
and inoculate uh, from them using that false flag attack. If we get the word out about it before it happens, they may be dissuaded from pulling that particular chemical weapon trigger. Also, let's use the comment section of this post for accumulating information. Let's use an open source investigation method here to compile information about this incident as it continues to unfold. And hopefully, hopefully there are signs that they're starting to back away from this and they're saying, oh, look, mission accomplished, no chemical weapon attack occurred. Let's make sure they go down that road and do not pull another false flag. That's going to be it for today. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com. All of the links to all of the things I'm talking about will be in the show notes, of course, as always. So please do consult them and please do leave more information in the comments section. I'm looking forward to pursuing this investigation with you. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.